Tonight, terror bus attack. A militant attack in India has resulted in the death of several Hindu pilgrims. Ceasefire plan. The UN Security Council backed a US ceasefire proposal for Gaza, welcomed by Hamas. Apple Intelligence Apple revealed its latest products and features during the developers' conference. Dragon Boat The Dragon Boat race in Hong Kong draws interest, capturing the spirit of tradition and competition in the city. All that and more as the world news tonight starts right now. and thank you for tuning in tonight on World News. We have lots of fresh updates to bring to you and we start again off in India. At least nine people were killed and 33 injured when a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims plunged into a deep gorge after a suspected militant attack in the Indian federal territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Two militants fired at a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims in the Indian Federal Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, local police said on Monday. The bus plunged into a deep gorge as a result of Sunday's attack, leaving those on board either dead or wounded. Investigators were seen gathering evidence at the wreckage site, while the nearby forested area was heavily guarded by security. The Himalayan region, which is also claimed by Pakistan, has been rocked by militant violence since the start of an anti-Indian insurgency in 1989. Tens of thousands of people have been killed, although the violence has reduced in recent years. The last major attack on Hindu pilgrims in the region happened in 2017, when a bus was targeted, killing eight people. Sunday's incident came a day after a local police chief said the number of militants in the territory was dropping but 70 to 80 foreign militants remained active. The injured were moved to nearby hospitals and a search for the attackers is underway, police said in a statement. The UN Security Council on Monday backed a resolution supporting a US proposal for a ceasefire over Gaza, which the Palestinian militant group Hamas has welcomed. The draft resolution has been adopted. The United Nations Security Council backed a plan on Monday for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. It's the plan U.S. President Joe Biden outlined on May 31st, aimed at ending the eight-month-long war. Monday's resolution welcomes that proposal, says Israel has accepted the deal, and calls on Hamas to agree to it. Will those in favor of the draft resolution please raise their hand? 14 Security Council members voted in favor. Abstentions. Russia abstained. Its ambassador asked what Israel had specifically agreed to. Hamas welcomed the adoption of the U.S. drafted resolution. In a statement, the militant group said it's ready to cooperate with mediators over implementing the plan's principles. It's time for this war to end. The resolution supports a three-phase ceasefire plan laid out by Biden, yeah. which he described as an Israeli initiative. Much. Negotiators from the U.S., Egypt and Qatar have been trying to hash out a ceasefire for months. Hamas says it wants a permanent end to the war in Gaza, an Israeli withdrawal from the enclave of 2.3 million people. Israel is retaliating against Hamas, which rules Gaza, over the October 7th attack by its militants. More than 1,200 people were killed and over 250 taken hostage, according to Israeli tallies. More than 37,000 Palestinians have been killed in the Israeli assault, according to Gaza health authorities. Apple has just unveiled its personal intelligence system. They're calling it Apple Intelligence. Essentially, it can tap into your device's personal information to answer your questions, all while keeping privacy in mind. Apple has unveiled its artificial intelligence technology called Apple Intelligence, which the company says will put powerful generative models right at the core of Apple products. It draws on your personal context to give you intelligence that's most helpful and relevant for you. It protects your privacy at every step, and it is deeply integrated into our platforms and throughout the apps you rely on to communicate, work, and express yourself. 
The AI will be integrated into Apple's operating systems used in its products, namely the iPhone, iPad, and MacBook. Apple says the new functions will help users in their everyday tasks, in writing and communication, as well as in image and emoji creation. It will also help Siri, Apple's digital assistant since 2011, carry out new actions, especially by using OpenAI's ChatGPT. The new functions were announced at the company's annual Worldwide Developer Conference on Monday at its headquarters in California. Despite the announcement, Apple shares were down nearly 2 percent on Monday before market closing, amid voices that Apple intelligence is nothing new but simply an upgrade of existing technologies. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump sat down for a 30-minute interview with the probation officer as he prepares for his sentencing on July 11th. Tonight, former President Donald Trump taking his next step as a convicted criminal, meeting for the first time with a probation officer before he's sentenced next month. The purpose of this meeting, which was conducted remotely, Trump at his Mar-a-Lago estate, is to help the officer prepare a report with a sentencing recommendation for Judge Juan Rashan. Trump was found guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records to cover up a hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels. He has attacked the verdict and the judge over and over. I just went through a rigged trial in New York with a highly conflicted, and I mean highly conflicted, judge where there was no crime. It was made up fabricated stuff no word on what trump told the probation officer today but her report to the judge must include trump's own description of his crime whether he accepts responsibility and anything he wants to say about why he did it unlike most convicts trump was allowed to have an attorney with him for today's interview which is generally intended to provide the judge with a more rounded picture of the person about to be sentenced including their personal financial and professional history an aircraft which was carrying Malawi's vice president, Solos Chilima, along with nine other individuals, has been reported missing. According to a statement from the country's presidential office, the plane went off the radar following its departure from the capital, Lilongwe, on Monday morning. While the cause of the aircraft's disappearance is still unknown, Malawi's president, Lazarus Chakera Shakwera, was said a search and rescue operation is underway. The Malawi Defence Force aircraft was heading to Mzuzu International Airport in the north of the country. 51-year-old Chilima, who has been vice president for 10 years, was reportedly on his way to represent the government at the burial of a former cabinet minister, Ralph Kasambara. In 2022, Chilima was arrested and charged over allegations he accepted bribes in exchange for government contracts. The charges were dropped last month, however, without a clear explanation. Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov welcomed the Foreign Ministers of BRICS member countries on Monday for a two-day meeting in the Russian city of Nizhny Novgorod. The meeting is the first since the newest members Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates joined the cooperation platform for the world's largest emerging economies. Top diplomats from those countries joined counterparts from Brazil, China, India, Russia and South Africa to discuss strategic partnerships. Among the topics on the agenda is the development of a platform for settlements in national currencies for mutual trade. The summit comes ahead of a major BRICS leaders summit set for October in the Russian city of Kazan. Russia holds the BRICS chairmanship for 2024. The bloc currently represents over a quarter of the world's GDP. Let's take a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. The jury began deliberations in the case of Hunter Biden. The US president's son was accused of lying about his use of illegal drugs when he bought a handgun in 2018. Hunter Biden's case is now in the hands of the jury. After closing arguments wrapped in his criminal gun trial on Monday, he faces felony charges that include lying about his drug use on a gun purchase form in 2018 and illegally possessing the revolver he bought for 11 days. He's pleaded not guilty. 
The federal government case is the first criminal trial of a U.S. president's child. It's offered an intimate view of the younger Biden's years of struggle with alcohol and crack cocaine abuse, which prosecutors say legally precluded him from buying a gun. Last week, Hunter Biden's ex-wife, former girlfriend, and sister-in-law all testified about his drug use. In the prosecution's closing arguments, a government attorney said common sense understanding of the grim testimony of Hunter Biden's constant drug use filled in any gaps in evidence about his behavior around the time of the gun purchase. The defense, meanwhile, compared the government's case to the work of a magician who focuses attention on drug use for months or years before the gun purchase to create the illusion Hunter Biden was a user of crack cocaine when he bought the gun. The sentencing guidelines for the charges against Biden are 15 to 21 months. But legal experts say defendants in cases similar to his often get shorter sentences and are less likely to be incarcerated if they abide by the terms of their pre-trial release. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky announced his arrival in Germany for talks with Chancellor Olaf Scholz and to participate in a conference on Ukrainian reconstruction. A home left in ruins. In her son on Monday, the result of a Russian missile. It's just a drop in the ocean when it comes to the destruction Ukraine has suffered after two years of a full-scale invasion by Russia. The World Bank, United Nations and European Commission estimate it will cost at least 451 billion euros for Ukraine's reconstruction. That amount up 75 billion just in the past year and increasing by the day. After two years of war, the Russians have destroyed some two million housing units, 8,400 kilometers of major roadways, and almost 300 bridges across the country. Missile strikes have also caused significant damage to Ukraine's infrastructure, including to the country's power grid. With the war still raging, Kyiv already has its sights on rebuilding once the war is over. At a two-day conference that kicks off in Berlin on Tuesday, hosted by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, President Vladimir Zelensky is expected to unveil 95 investment projects in need of funding, along with mayors from several Ukrainian cities, making their pitch to foreign ministers and private investors. But there will be one notable absence, Mustafa Nayem, the head of Ukraine's reconstruction agency. On Monday, just a day before the conference was set to start, he resigned, citing systemic obstacles that prevented him from performing his job. Last month, the infrastructure minister was dismissed in a government reshuffle. As Ukraine makes a formal pitch for financial help, the departures are likely to raise questions about Ukraine's ability to overcome bureaucratic challenges as it looks toward a long-term recovery. On the road to White House tonight, former President Donald Trump's hush money conviction isn't a factor for most voters in the 2024 election, while other surveys show Trump has lost a small share of potential backers in the wake of the verdict and the race remains close. Polls show historically low voter enthusiasm as both candidates have relatively low favorability ratings below 45 percent. Trump has centered his campaign around his legal woes, accusing Using prosecutors and judges in his criminal cases of working at Biden's behest to hurt his chances of winning the election. Biden, meanwhile, has cast Trump as a threat to democracy. Polls show the economy, immigration, abortion and inflation are consistently top issues for voters. The surveys found a majority trust Trump over Biden to handle the economy, crime and the Israeli-Palestine conflict, but trust Biden more than Trump on abortion. Amid a search for partners to form South Africa's next government, President Cyril Ramaphosa's spokesperson said he will not attend the G7 summit in Italy. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa will not attend this week's Group of Seven summit in Italy, his spokesperson said on Monday, as his party rushed to find partners to govern the country. Having suffered a first-ever loss of its parliamentary majority in last month's election, Ramaphosa's African National Congress is holding talks with a wide range of parties. But the ANC is under pressure to reach an agreement quickly, as the new National Assembly is set to hold its first sitting on Friday. 
Two of the larger opposition parties, the pro-business Democratic Alliance and the radical left economic freedom fighters, have indicated that they will not work together. One of the national legislature's first acts will be to elect the next president, which is still expected to be Ramaphosa as the ANC remains the biggest party. Yes. Diplomatic sources had said Ramaphosa was due to take part in the G7 summit from June 13th to 15th. That's at the invitation of Italy, which holds the rotating presidency. It wants to broaden the gathering beyond the usual seven industrial powers, the United States, Britain, Canada, France, Germany, Japan and Italy. In a high seas operation, the Colombian Navy intercepted two boats and seized nearly five tons of cocaine. The Colombian Navy has seized almost five tons of cocaine after intercepting two boats in a high seas operation. In a joint operation by the Navy and the Air Force, the Colombian Armed Forces chased after two boats sailing off the Pacific coast near the border with Ecuador. The first boat to be apprehended was carrying some 2.7 tons of cocaine. The crew had opened the ballast valves of their boat to let the water in, but Colombian authorities managed to move the packaged narcotics before the boat sank. Hours later, a second boat carrying over 2.2 tons of cocaine was also apprehended. Seoul's new helicopter shuttle service to Incheon Airport reduces travel time to 20 minutes, signaling South Korea's shift towards urban air mobility. A helicopter flies above the city of Seoul. It will soon provide the country's first helicopter shuttle service. Opening its reservations on Tuesday, the helicopter service will start operating in two weeks. Its major route, which is from Gangnam to Incheon International Airport, cuts travel time from an hour and a half down to just 20 minutes. The chopper can hold up to eight passengers, and not only does it shuttle customers to and from the airport, but it will also provide tours. The company aims to use helicopters as a stepping stone to further develop urban air mobility. EVTOLs use batteries or fuel cells rather than a helicopter's typical combustion rotor engine, which helps reduce noise. Data from the Korea Agency for Infrastructure Technology Advancement shows that South Korea is looking to commercialize UAM starting from 2025 and to further integrate it by 2030. By 2040, it aims to reach 10.9 billion U.S. dollars in terms of market value. UAM will be a new, smart mobility solution to increase transport efficiency. However, apart from technological advancement, we also have to look at how it can be integrated into the city and our daily life as a new transportation system. In order to establish a well-integrated UAM system, the private sector should provide transport services while the government aims to establish a traffic management system and provide the necessary infrastructure. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Welcome back. Hundreds of paddlers joined in for 29 races in the Aberdeen Harbour, making it the biggest event of its kind in the city. At the same time, competitions were happening in different parts of Hong Kong. Dragon Boat Racing, which started over 1,000 years ago in China's southern Lingan region, has its modern roots in Hong Kong about 40 years back. Well, that's all the stories we have to report to you tonight on World News. Tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Stay tuned as we'll be back in just a moment with the Nile Business Report. Thank you for watching and good night.